Hello everybody and welcome back to another modern gameplay video. Today we are playing a green white bugler leap deck. So we played evolutionary leap last week on the channel when we played that green white eldritch evolution deck that did very well. If you are a green creature based deck loyalist such as myself, uh, you definitely want to go check that out. It was awesome. The deck did super well. Um, but we ended up sideboarding out evolutionary leap like every single round. And so I wanted to play this deck today to do it some justice because I believe it's a very good card. The meta may be quick, so that it may be not be as good as it used to, but I still really believe in this card. So if you watch the channel at all in the last month, you might have heard me mention the green white bugler leap deck a couple times because I used to play it in paper. Ever since uh, Militia Bugler came out, uh, this is a deck that was an idea that I was like thinking to myself, if I ate their vial in the Militia Bugler, it's very, very efficient because you get free value and then you can just like have a ton of mana up. And like I was thinking, if you found find a voice resurgence off of that and you leap it, that's a good thing to do with your mana while you're violing in the Bugler because you have so much free mana up. And then you can find like Renegade Rallyer to get back the voice and then you just have lots of value in sackables forever and ever and ever because you're going to eventually find more voices. So that's kind of what the deck is based around, hence Bugler Leap. It's based around every creature in our deck being able to be found off of Militia Bugler's trigger. Um, including the big boys like Tender Shoot Dryad, which is even something I used to do in Standard and in Arena back when I played Arena. Uh, because it's like a five drop, but it's technically it's powers too, but it generates way more power than that. Same thing with like, you know, Knight of the Reliquary and, and Knight of Autumn, like those things, they have technically two power, but they're like bigger than that. Um, so yeah, the, the Bugler has a lot of value. And, uh, another big reason that I'm deciding to play this deck again is because of Skyclave Apparition. And I know we've played this card in like three different decks the past couple weeks, but I'm just absolutely in love with this card. It's like one of the best modern cards we've gotten in a while. Like I, if anything makes me ache to play Paper Magic again, it's this card. I just want to jam it in every deck forever and just, cause it's like, it gives white creature decks or green white creature decks or whatever. It just it just gives you a good answer to anything threatening in modern that isn't in a Tron deck. Like it literally answers anything. And then it's free like to sack to an evolutionary leap because it gives your opponent a do nothing vanilla token that's going to be tiny and then you can get some big stuff. Uh, and then we're also, because we're running the Skyclave Apparition, I thought another cool thing to grab off of the, um, the Bugler was a Charming Prince because it has that flicker ability on it. And I'm pretty sure this is one of the very few besides, you know, Felidar our guardian, one of the very few modern cards, a uh, reasonably costed that is a flicker effect that is a creature and, you know, couldn't run anything like Restoration Angel or Flicker Wisp in here because Bugler doesn't hit them. Um, so yeah, the Charming Prince, Prince flickering the Skyclave Apparition is going to be super annoying, good value. Flickering like Eternal Witness is going to be super good, annoying value as well. And if this package was in here, you could also make this sort of a Leonid Arbiter kind of hate bears deck with the new Archon of Amiria. So there's different shells that you can run, but I just couldn't deny the value of Skyclave Apparition. This card is amazing. Um, so yeah, this was one of my all-time favorite uh, decks that I brewed in paper. So I'm happy to play it again here today. So let's do it. And shoutouts to our sponsors, TCG Player and Mana Traders for all of your Magic the Gathering needs. If you need to pick up some Magic cards, consider picking them up through our decklist link down below. That's our TCG Player link and anything you purchase through there really helps out the channel. It is the number one place on the internet to buy Magic the Gathering singles. And if you'd like to try today's deck out on Magic Online, consider signing up with Mana Traders in the link down below using the code MarinMoon to save 15% off and you can rent today's deck and play along with us. They're the most trusted and reliable Magic Online card rental service and it is what I personally personally use and how I'm going to be filming this video today. And shoutouts to our supporters over on Patreon. Their names have been scrolling down below. It is because of you guys' channel is possible, so thank you very much for your support. And an extra special shout out to The Real Shroom for being our top tier supporter for the month. And if you would like to become a patron as well, the link is down below. And with that, let's jump right into the deck tag followed by the gameplay. Hope you enjoy. All right, we are live here on Twitch. Got our deck freshly rented out courtesy of Mana Traders. This is Bugler Leap. 
one of my favorite decks I brewed in paper. So in the intro, we basically went over everything. We got a single Knight of Reliquary, which I think that this should have been a two of, but I couldn't figure out where. Maybe you can go Singleton Eternal Witness and run two relics, um, Reliquaries instead. We got Birds and Hierarch as our ramp and one drop plays in addition to a Vial, just in case we don't draw the Vial. We want plenty of mana in this deck. We got plenty of things to leap. We only got three total leaps, however, because if you draw two of them, then the second one's basically dead. And so I, I didn't like situations where I drew multiple leaps. So three is the number where you want to see one every game, but only one. So yeah. We got a total of 23 lands and a lot of tech, especially a lot of tech for night to fetch out, like stirring wildwood canopies. We need to draw a ghost quarter if they have like a threatening land that we need to deal with. And then Gavney Township, of course, to power the team if we are on a state where a board state where we have a ton of little dudes, but they're not big. We gotta buff them. Sideboard, of course, is jam-packed with more things that Buggler can find. We got core firewalker for anti-blitz and burn. Avon Mind Sensor for anti-Titan. And then we got Eidolon for anti-just um, storm decks in general and Blitz. Um, you know, it could be Archon of Amiria, but that's in Bolt range and this one isn't. And likely decks are going to be storing enough, casting a bunch of spells, might have access to Bolt. Uh, we have a Banisher Priest's additional removal spell, just in case four Skyclaves are not enough, so more removal. We have a play set of Scoos, a whole set because we don't want to shut down our own grave because we're sacking like voices and we got ewits and stuff and sacking stuff to evolutionary leap um i mean you it's technically kind of cute you could run rip if you want but this you can find off of bugler and so yeah whole set um we got one meddling mage i know it's blue but you can play it off of vile birds and noble so i felt like it was good enough to just throw in there um, and it can just name a card. So if you're going up against a combo deck, that's their win cons one specific card. You can just name that and they can't cast it. And then get Teague because it doesn't really shut us down at all. Like our leaps are only two mana. Um, and then you can shut down like Coco's and anything out of Tron and like cryptic commands and stuff like that. And with that, we're ready to go on to the gameplay. Hope you enjoy. Got a game here against Thick Shack. And we're going to be on the draw here with some green white bugler leap. And that's going to be a keep. That looks pretty good because any hand that has Vile Leap is amazing. And on top of that, having a Mana Dork to Violet and something to sack is amazing. So this is like, we couldn't have, we couldn't even hope for a better hand other than just having like three Razor Verge Thickets maybe. So the best turn progression you can do in this deck is Vile into Evolutionary Leap. Arden's Claws. So we're going up against uh, Ozolith. Alright, Ewit is decent because I'm going to be able to leap the voice and then immediately get it back. Get a forest and go for a vial. A violate. One of the best Pokemon items. How you doing, Jim Wolfie? It's great to see you again. Think you should give webcam games a try? Oh no, I have no space here to play a webcam game. I have no space at all. I live in a very cramped little room. There's the Ozolith. This is going to be a tough game. I got to draw so many Skyclave Apparitions. Alright, let's take up the Vile. Play Horizon Canopy and play a... um. Evolutionary Leap. They're quite familiar with this card because they play it as a singleton in their deck. Some of them do, some of them don't, but they used to. Like I said in the intro of this video, that Evolutionary Leap saw play in um, Hardened Scales only in the past few years of, of this card's existence. Like, it's only been in this deck right there that we're going up against. Artbound Ravager. All right, we'll take it. And end step, we will vial in our noble. Take a vial. 
Ghost Quarter. All right, let's think about our lines of play here. I think I right now violin voice and then leap it and look for like a skyclave apparition. So let's do that. Violin voice. Leap it. Give me a skyclave. We get a birds. All right. Um. Well, I think I'm going to go Ewit and get back the voice. Yes. And now I'm just going to chump something with Ewit here. They got zero cards in hand. Uh, their Pendle Haven doesn't do anything. And yeah, this is all they got. They got nothing else. So we have a good chance to stabilize. All right, I'm down to just block block. Like, I don't mind. Like, something's gonna die here. I have so much value in this deck that I don't even mind losing my board. I'll let my Ewit die, sure. And they're even gonna sack their Ozolith? Oh no, no, they just put the counters on. They sack their own Ravager to just make their, make their Arcbound Worker huge. I can deal with one single creature, because once I find this Skyclave Apparition, which is inevitable, is gonna be soon, they're just gonna be done. And then I can even, like, exile their Ozolith because I can violin the Charming Prince and flicker my Skyclave and hit their Ozolith as well. So this is great. So we're going to leave Vile on two here. And let's Vile in the voice and sack it to Eldritch Evol or Evolutionary Leap. Make a token, and we find a Boyd's of Paradise. All right, go to combat. Attack with Ewit. And then let's go with Charming Prince and flicker our Ewit. Yep, exile that. And play a bird. And play a thicket. And go to the end step. Ewit comes back in and is going to grab the voice. And pass turn. We got blockers forever, basically. I was going to say blockers for days, but no, forever. Welding jar, sure pretty dead here they can go ahead and put all those counters all the kind of they want i don't even care they're gonna make that thing into a 12 12 all right let's just chump block with the charming prince and we're gonna say no on vile we're going to vial in the voice resurgence, sack it to leap, get some free value. We get a militia bugler. All right, play the bugler. And let's grab a voice resurgence. Play Windslap Teeth, crack it, get a basic forest, play voice, and now we're just going to hold up evolution, so we're going to declare blocks with it and then sack it to evolution. So let's go to combat and attack with Elemental and Ewit.
See, I tell, I'm telling you, when you get the draws with Vile Leap, this deck is power. I'm telling you, it's power. The, the value town just goes off and you start doing stuff forever. It's crazy. All right, they scoop it up and we're going on to the sideboard. So against hardened scales, um, I want probably nothing. Probably got everything I want. Banisher Priest, however, I do like and would like to bring in over an E-Wit that's filler. Um, you know, maybe Knight of the Reliquary is filler. Because E-Wit's like good for just having chum blocks forever. Yeah, let's let's cut Knight and run it like that. Dude, Tender Shoot Dryad's gonna be nuts. That gives us chump blocks forever. <laughs> You wholeheartedly approve of making infect players cry. Shout out to T1 Glistener Elf. Ooh. Violent birds and double skyclave. I like it. With triple mana dork. This is a great hand. I just need to draw a leap or like a bugler or some kind of way to get the value flowing. Charming Prince. All right. No, we're going to start on. Hopefully they don't Nature's Claim it. Please no Nature's Claim. Hardens Claws. And Arcbound Workers. Same draw as last time. All right, always yield to Vile. Pick it up. Ghost Quarter. Noble. And go. Solemnity versus an Infect deck make them cry. Yeah, if Infect was like top of the meta, I mean, Solemnity would be great against Infect and against Hardened Scales. So that'd be funny if we actually had it. Scott, I like... Solemnity is just randomly just good sometimes. Maybe it's like worth sideboarding in modern. People don't know it. They didn't even swing. All right, violin birds. Um. Oh yeah, this is gonna be awesome because we can like play Skyclave and then flicker it with with the uh, Charming Prince. So now we go Skyclave Apparition here. Do I want to eat their hardened scales? I think I want to eat their creatures. I think their creatures are more valuable. Because I have another Skyclave next turn to hit the scales. Alright, attempt to eat the Ravager. Oh, I should have exiled the, the Arcbound Worker first, because then they'd be left with a 1-1 one, one body instead of a 2-2. Two, two. You know, if I successfully get this Ravager out of here, I think I'd rather hit the Hardened Scales. It, it reduce the power of whatever play they want to go for next turn. Okay, it looks like they're just going to sack it, so they're not going to get a 2-2 anyways. That's great. Since they're committing so hard to that Worker, I think I'll just, I'll just eat the Worker. They don't have to think so much about it. Vile. Charming Prince. And we're going to go Exile Skyclave Apparition. They get a zero zero, and then we play Aether Vial number two. So we can have one on two, one on three once we get that evolutionary leap. And pass turn. And step. It comes back into play. Hey Sparky, can't wait for Saturday. New DLC coming out. Gonna be sick. Yeah, they scoop it up. Too much removal. Taking down hardened scales. Oh, I just hit my mic. Taking down hardened scales. See, once the Skyclave starts, once the second, okay, one Skyclave Apparition trigger is like, okay, maybe I can fight through this. But then the second one is like, it's all over. 
It's like it's so good, dude. Skyclave Apparition is like the new best white card. It just ends games, especially when you flicker it like that. And like now the Death and Toxes is like one of the new best decks because now they're flickering Skyclave Apparition. It's just getting obnoxious. All right, GG. Got a game here against Motsy1328. We're going to be on the draw here with some green, white, bugler leap. And that's going to be a keep. We got a uh, one dead card, which is the redundant leap. But at least if one gets Thoughtseize, we'll be able to still have it. But yeah, we got the, the leapable Skyclave, which is good. I like an Aether Vial, though. Ooh, that's a leapable voice. That's looking nice. I'm hoping they slam something that I can exile, like a Bitter Blossom here or something. Your kid was worth it, just a little biased. Yeah, see, you fall, you fall in love with your kid. Like you, like, you can be a very happy parent. Like, if you really, that's what you want to do. That's like your destiny in life is to be a parent. Like, there's people that are, that are like that, and I respect that. Like, good for you on wanting to continue the race to to be able to produce a new generation if you love your family that much um but for me personally i'm like it's so expensive i don't have the money to have a kid like i can barely take care of myself so taking care of a like a kid would be just so backbreaking for me And I'm also like so awkward around kids. Like, I could never hold a baby. It's just like so awkward for me. <laughs> Yo, thank you so much for giving me a voice token. Give me another voice token as much as i want to keep those voice tokens and grow them i kind of want to just leap for value i was gonna leap it anyways wetting out about having a kid to beat in golden eye 007 i don't play that game anymore like i used to i still want to come back to it at some point it's still right here like it's right right here in my n64 that's right next to me um but i just don't have the time to play anymore because i'm working on youtube stuff all right, um, let us go Horizon Canopy and crack it, because I need to draw things, cards, I need stuff to do. All right, if they want to kill any of my voice tokens, I'll just leap them. I draw a bugler. They're doing nothing. They're just Mardu control. Ooh, voice. A voice is great. Gives me another anti-removal card and something that I can leap. Play the tap land while I can. I'm getting there for two. And then we'll end step um, leap our voice. Get some free value. If they're a combo deck of swords, we're just giving them all the time in the world to find what they need. But with Shambling Vent and Bolt Push Path... It definitely feels like just a control deck, which I think we can definitely beat with our leap value. Sure. It's going to leap my voice in response. Or leap my elemental token, because I'll be left behind with the token from that voice. That was the worst wrath I've seen. <laughs> I've like I love to play like Fink's voice decks and paper. So when somebody's wrath upgrades the power on my board, that's hilarious. It happens. It really does. All right, Bugler.
We're gonna grab a Skyclave Apparition, play a Forest, play a Bird, and attack for three. They're not giving us anything to use these Skyclave Apparitions on. Like, what are they gonna use to beat us? I assume it's like Nahiri. Usually, Mardu controls Wincon is Nahiri Emrakul, or like Chandra. Have you played Pathfinder Kingmaker on PC? No. Like I said, 99 times out of 100, if you ask me, have you played this game before? My answer is going to be no. All right, in response to that, let's go ahead and sack our bird. We got Eternal Witness, which is great. You can remove my stuff all you want. I'll have infinite value forever. Just shock here. So Ewit. Get back a voice. Play the voice. And leave our sack value up. So if you if you ask me that same question, like have you played this game? If it was like an old game. I might say yes, but if it's something recent in like the past 10 years, I might I'd probably say no. Because like, I used to get new video games all the time when I was little, but in teen to adult years, my the amount of video games that I get or buy or whatever is much less than before. <laughs> Alright, they're gonna deal two damage to each creature so in response uh hello there we go let's sack our e-weight for value get a tender shoot dryad and now i got the infinite sack value off of the tendies Get a forest, play tendies. Attack Chandra. And now I can just sack these tokens for days to get leap value. Poker you hate? No, I don't hate poker. Poker's a fun game. I played it a lot in Red Dead Redemption and Red Dead Redemption 2 and in other miscellaneous games. Gonna push a token in response. Let's leap it for value. You know the drill. In response, let's leap that for value. You know the drill. The opponent's literally mono removal. The only win con we saw was Chandra. They're just trying to make us deck ourselves or something. Can I get an Aether Vial? There we go, that's what I wanted. Aether Vial is gonna make this go a lot quicker. Militia Bugler. Grab a voice. Play a voice. Get in for three. We got lethal on board now. As long as this connects. All right. Lethal is present. Opponent's got two cards left. See, the problem with the deck like that is they just run out of stuff to do so quick. Uh, no. We played two different Cleansing Wildfire decks, but we haven't played Jeskai. I haven't played Jeskai in so long. The last Jeskai deck we played on the channel was, um, it was Pride of the Clouds Jeskai Flyers. With, like, Mantis Rider and the new Skyclave, or Skycat, or whatever, Skycat Sovereign. Alright, Charming Prince. Take a vial. And let's play another voice. Oh, they stopped in our draw step. 
Oh, they probably have Kolagon's command. That's probably why they have a draw step stop. Uh, they cannot activate their Shambling Vent because they paid the wrong mana. So let's just attack for lethal and snag our W. Diablo 2? No, I played Diablo 3, but not Diablo 2. Uh, if it's a game like that, likely I'll say no. But if it's like a Nintendo game or something that was on GameCube, N64, NES, SNES, Game Boy, any of those consoles, maybe original Xbox, I might say yes. But if it's like a PC game, then no. PC or PlayStation, likely it's going to be a no. Because I grew up on Nintendo and then I moved over to like to Xbox plus Nintendo. But never PlayStation or PC. All right, so Mardu Control. I think I have everything I want for Control. So I could bring in Core Firewalker, but then again, they got Push and Path. Um, Meddling Mage naming Chandra, but they'll be able to kill it so easily. Gadog Teague, but they'll be able to kill it so easily. So I think we'll just run it back like this. I mean, Skyclave Apparition did like nothing. So I guess I could bring in Scoos. Or maybe, like, Core Firewalker just because it's better than Skyclave here. <laughs> maybe, I feel like they're gonna have Nahiri's. Or like Chandra's or something, like. Okay, I'll cut one Skyclave Apparition. Maybe two. Scoos might not be terrible, but I doubt they're using the graveyard. Didn't look like they were. Just ran it like that. Eternal Darkness, Sanity's Requiem. Never heard of it. Yu-Gi-Oh? No, I didn't. I never played any Yu-Gi-Oh games. Played Yu-Gi-Oh on paper, but not any video games. The secret to buying games as an adult is not to buy the latest stuff. I still buy Xbox 360 games for $5 sometimes. Yeah, but like... I want to rebuy Fallout New Vegas. Let's keep that. I want to rebuy Fallout New Vegas with the DLCs, but it's like so expensive still. And I just rebought Dark Souls and it was like 40 bucks. Like why? The game's like 10 years old. I can link you the deck I have for the Jeskai control that you can play. No, it's all right. Um, like I said to somebody earlier, it sounds, I know, it sounds very sell out of me, but I only do donation decks now, like, because I get so many deck requests, and so at a certain point, I gotta only accept the ones who are willing to pay for it, rather than just doing anyone anybody ever tells me, because then my life would be consumed by playing a million decks. Because people send me lists all the time, so at this point... Um, I even have a Patreon tier for, for um, a certain tier where you join it and then I'll play your deck guaranteed. Within reason. And then also, um, Dial I know Dialthar has done uh, a donation deck before and doing another one soon. Which you might even see next week if Dialthar is down for it. I think he said, um, when was it Dialthar? Are you still here? Are you still lurking? If not, I'll hit you up on Discord. Oh, I should have went with the plane so that I could play Stirring Wildwood next turn. My mistake, but it's okay. We we don't have any four drops anyways. Path to exile, sure. Nice little main phase path so that I don't get lands. Or so that I don't get a token. Did you play Legacy 2? Do you mean T-O-O? -O? Yeah, we played Legacy last month on the channel once. Played Mono Red, um, Empty the Warns. It was a lot of fun. I liked it a lot. 
I'm a big fan of those kinds of styles of decks, and you can't really play those in modern anymore because all the good pieces for it are banned, like Git Probe and stuff of that nature. So instead, we played it in Legacy, and it was awesome. All right, let's scry. Let's grab Eternal Witness, put that on top, and Skyclave on bottom. And I can E-Wit back and E-Wit and start the chain. Wait a minute, are you saying streamers actually want to get paid for content they create? They don't just spend hours streaming and editing for the good of humanity? Yeah, exactly, Pentecost. <laughs> Yeah, it sounds very sell out of me, but in a nutshell, I'm saying pay up or I'm not playing it. And that sounds hecka rude. I, I, I hate to sound that way, but it's the reality of it. Because if I just played everybody's decks, I wouldn't have a life anymore. <laughs> All right, um, let's Ewit back and Ewit. So if they don't have another pusher path, this core firewalker is just going in. What even is that? It's like a derp dinosaur. It's a seal. Uh, played your sword sliver deck you played a few months ago. Friends loved it one on turn three three times yeah it's awesome that deck is insane it was one of the coolest like definitely top three perhaps even top two coolest decks i've ever played on the channel maybe the coolest deck like and i would not argue it and i'm not just saying that it was insane so shout out to the person who told me about the combo and then i brewed up the list and it was turned out to be sweet all right um go to combat attack for two Ewit. Get back, Ewit. And then let's play a Charming Prince and Scry. I could have saved that to flicker the Ewit again, but I just want to wait till this Ewit dies and then I'll get it back with the other Ewit and continue the loop. I'll just use this to Scry, find some goodies, perhaps a Tender Tree Dryad or another voice. Buggler's great. Okay, it's bottom of the Noble, top of the Buggler. And remember not to fetch because I want to draw that bugler. S uh, slivers turn one win. No, it's turn three. Turn three win. So it's a combination of Sorin and Morophon. Sorin, uh, Imperius Bloodlord, and Morophon, um, the colorless seven drop guy. It's a combo. And it was nuts. <laughs> and it was really good. If only I knew about Board the Weatherlight to put in there. Shout outs to Bruce by the Magic Guy for that one. Obnix, sure. Probably gonna kill Core Firewalker, I'd imagine. Yep. All right, let's draw our buggy. And one, two, three, Buggler. Grab Knight of the Reliquary. And then let's play Ewit. So I still got Lethal on board. Let's get back Core Firewalker. Go to combat. Kill Obnix and hit them down to eight. Put them in lethal range with their Walker dead and only two cards in hand. I mean, I, I respect the heck out of Marta Control, and that's, it's a deck that always crosses my mind. Like, what if this was good? Like, you should definitely have Smiting Helix in there, first of all. Um, Faithless Looting really killed decks like this, though. Like, it was one of the main pieces of, like, this kind of strategy. Pitching Smiting Helix and Lingering Souls and all that good stuff. Crazy value. 
All right, I'm gonna go for lethal. Let's man up this uh, stirring wild wood here. And go in at their face. Oh, it looks like they're conceding, I think. And that is gonna take down Mardu Control. GG's and huge props for trying to build Mardu Control. It is awesome, it looks really good, and I know that that deck would destroy a lot of the creature base meta. However, our creature base deck in general is Value Town. It doesn't care about removal, it just keeps on generating bodies nonstop, and it's impossible for a deck like that to like kind of deal with the deck like this. However, I know that deck would just bop a lot of other creature decks. And another card you really need is Helix. You need Stabilization. There's a lot of burn. There's a lot of red. You need ways to gain life. Helix, Smiting Helix. Those are your ways to go. And if you want to beat Control versus Control, run Lingering Souls, run Bitter Blossom. Go a lot less painful. And yeah, that, I think that that's the kind of route you want to go. Um, but yeah, totally respect it. GG. Got a game here against I uh, or against Bovine. Good old bulls. And this is gonna be a keep. It's slow, but we have a turn two leap and a turn three bugler. I gotta find a vial to make this hand efficient because you can't just simply have the leap. You gotta pair it with either a bunch of mana dorks or the aether vial. Opponent goes basic planes go. That's a cool looking planes they got there. What plane? That's. A Magic Online promo, that's really cool. The Magic Online promo basics are like the best basics, but they don't exist in real life. I don't know why. Right, let's drop out Leap. Oh, so they're on Stoneblade. If he are the right person. No, I don't think I would ever be, what is it, monogamous? Never. Like, it's, it's not for me. I, like I said, I can't commit myself to a single person. So therefore, like, I can't really do relationships. It's just not my style. Because, like, I'm, I'm repeating for the 15th time, but yeah, I can't commit to a single person. Force of Virtue into Raise the Alarm Spectral Procession all in the blink of an eye. That's insane. That just came all out of nowhere. Yeah, Skyclave's got to eat that Force of Virtue, so no more pumps. So we have to the clock, and now I have blockers for the ground soldiers, but I need to be able to deal with those spirits in the air. So, yeah, I'm going to need to draw. Um, I can only hit non-token, right? Non-land, non-token. So th those things are going to hurt us for a bit. I'm going to need to gain some life. With trying they had another one, too. There's another Skyclave that does nothing. We're going to grab another bugler off the bugler. Yeah, I don't think we're going to beat those spirits in the air. No way. We got nothing to beat that. Um, yeah, like we could just gain life with, with Charming Prince and then continue to bounce it with other Charming Princes, but that's not going to be enough. All right, that was like the best like little two three curve they could have gotten right there. That was nuts. All right, so bring in Gadok Teague for sure. That says no to Spectral Procession. Um, and that's probably it. Just just Gadok Teague. Cut Knight. Cut one Ewit. Sure. Seems good. Maybe I cut the Ewit for a Banisher Priest. Because it can lower the clock in the sky, if need be. Thrun is the bomb, you have to admit that. Yeah, Thrun is, is a good dude. He's a good dude, and he's really hard to deal with for control, but generally, he's just okay. If you're going up against a 6-7 Goyf and you got a Thrun, you're just basically using Thrun to chump block every turn forever. Um, alright, well, I have mana dorks. I got one Skyclave Apparition. But this hand is lacking in mana. I'm gonna keep it because I'm hoping to top a land, then I go a bird plus charming prince scry for another land. Like, 
weird, but yeah, like Gadok Teague would also shut down Force of Virtue, so like Gadok Teague's really needed. Oh my goodness! All right, um, well, Charming Prince Scry. Keep them both. Gather the town's flock. And I think I have to go Skyclave eat the signal pest here so that it doesn't buff their humans and make them attack into my charming prince. Eat every lord I can. Here in the marination, we eat lords. Well, when I start my free love commune, you are invited. What's the free love commune? I don't know what that means. So that means you don't doesn't mind having childs. No, I'm not. I'm never going to have kids. I can't afford to have kids. Kids are expensive to own. All right, we're going to take that. We're taking a ton of damage here. But at least those guys are on the ground, so they're easier to deal with. Um, all right, we're going to go voice as a chump blocker. And we're going to go with the birdie. And pass turn. Please don't draw Lingering Souls or Spectral Procession. Dude, Black White Tokens, in my opinion, is one of like... Whoa! Yo, the raid! Was a top, top like three underrated decks. Happy, thank you so much for the raid. Party of eight and the host of nine. Thank you so much. Welcome, raiders. My name is Maven, aka Marin, if you watch me for MTG. You know, this is stupid, but I'm actually going to jump here. So welcome on in. We are playing some Magic of the Gathering. And we are down a game, hoping to claw our way back into it. Let me give you... Oh, 12, can you give a shout out to Happy, please? We got a mod here this time. Hello. Thank you, Grant Wallace, for the follow. How did your stream go, Happy? I give you hugs. You're playing Condemned Criminal Origins. Um, all right, what were we doing? We go in Ewit, grabbing the voice back and playing it. Grab the voice. And even though B Bugler makes better use of the mana, voice is more important here. I need to get another fat body. That's my boy. Fat body right there. So Skyclave dying actually is a threat. It's actually a problem. Oh, those are spirits. No. I got to take it. How are we going to deal with those spirits? We can't. Spooky game tonight. I remember when that game first got, like, I was playing MTG. I was going to say first got printed when that game came out. Yeah, I'm not going to beat these spirit tokens. Spirits are just so threatening. You can never deal with them. I mean, that does that save us? Spirits are just so threatening, or not sp spirits, but token decks. Like, they're the creatures. You just can't deal with them. You can't beat their board. It's insane. It's not going to beat them, dude. And the damage race and anything, like, and they're so resilient because they split up bodies. 
and what you have to deal with is the things that pump them and then once you deal with that you're you wasted so much time dealing with those things that now you have to deal with the actual tokens themselves which you can't do unless you got a sweeper so tokens is just insane so shout outs to bovine for playing um one of the coolest modern decks most underplayed underrated modern decks definitely um it just feels so good it just feels like an amazing deck especially when you throw in like bitter blossom in there too which i assume they got got a game here against me it's me my old avatar jrs0068 and we won the die we're gonna be on the play here with some green white bugler leap and that looks good got the bugler in the vial that's what we want to see so let's start on vial off of forest now the opponent's probably immediately confused like what plays vial in forest because <laughs> there's not much i would probably think eternal commands or green white hate bears good night marcus thank you so much for hanging out for such a long time i appreciate you and hope you have a nice sleep Alrighty. Um, no need to play Charming Prince right now. Let's just play Stirring Wildwood, get the tap land out the way. And the next turn we can just hard cast the bugler, see what we get, see if we can get any two drops to violin, like perhaps a voice. I was so close to putting like like the Heli- what is it called? The guy that fetches an enchantment? Heliod's Pilgrim? I don't think he fetches- I think he only fetches Auras, unfortunately. Season of Growth. Um, so we're going up against, um, Infect. Alright, we're gonna say yes here. And uh, let's go with- no, not Militia. Let's go with uh, Skyclave Apparition. Actually, no. Whenever a creature enters Scry, whenever you cast a spell targets a creature you control, draw. This only, it doesn't hit lands, it only has non-lands, so I guess we go Skyclave. And if we need to flicker it, we can violin that Charming Prince. You was promised your chats to be caught up. Oh yeah, that's true. So the way Mana Traders works is you pay a monthly subscription in return. Okay, let me see. Pray tell when you leap, do you think you will reap a victory from the deep or you shall defeat slowly creep like a slaughter bound sheep, leaving us to do not but weep before it is time for the sleep. You sound like Zakora. <laughs> <laughs> Zakora the Bay. Scale up. D does does Charming Prince return it immediately? You know the next sense. Well, I can't target it anyways. It's the land. It's we only exile non-land permanents. I'm gonna need to find a Knight of the Reliquary so I can go fetch a Ghost Quarter. So by the way, Manager's works. You pay a monthly subscription, and in return, you can borrow cards from their resources library. Exactly. That's how it works. You rent the deck you want, and then you try it, and then you return the cards, and then you rent another one, and then you return the cards, and you rent another one, and you return the cards. That's just how it works. All right, let's put in the Charming Prince, and let's scry two. Bottom both of these because they're not ghost quarters. This vial we're gonna take up to three. And we're going to vial in a bugler. And we're going to grab a noble. Going to play a four. Oh, I shouldn't have played the forest. Actually, yeah, I should have played the forest. Sorry. Bugler. We're going to grab tendies. All right, we're going to see if the opponent can generate lethal here. Likely they can. 
We're completely tapped out, so they have nothing to fear. It's it's crazy though, because we were like playing Skyclave Apparition, like, yeah, we're gonna go into this knowing we can answer anything in modern. But not lands, because it only hits non-land. So anything non-land in modern, let me correct myself. But you never really run into infect nowadays anyways, so there's no reason to fear that. Like we're getting got by it right now just because we only hit non-lands and but we have many ways to find this and hit non-lands, it's just happens to be that time so yeah it's one of them times i probably should have grabbed the birds instead of the noble because it can chump the flyer and i would have had another turn to live and it looks like i could i could have had lethal actually because i would have been able to activate stirring wildwoods and get in for lethal so if i got the bird there i probably would have won yeah i probably would have won if i grabbed the birds um all right sideboard give me um, I mean, Eidolon slows them down, but not much. I want Banisher Priest. And... No. Do I want Meddling Mage? Do I want Gadok Teague? Do I want Eidolon of Rhetoric? I don't think I want uh, Eidolon. Cut Ewit because it's filler. Alright, let me finish catching up in chat. It's a lot cheaper than trying to... Yeah, it's a lot cheaper than trying to buy cards on Moto, definitely. Yeah, he is a smuggler. Pilgrim only finds Auras, that's what I meant. Um, there's a tutor that finds enchantments. Like, there is there is the uh, the dude that, he's not, that finds enchantments and puts him into play when he dies. But he's not modern legal, so yeah, we can't run him. Would you like to play first? Yes, sir. Um, yeah, I'll keep that hand. We got the ghost quarter. We got a useless Ewit. All right, let's go fetch and shock temple. Go as a bird. Isn't there a plugin for Twitch that lets us mouse over the cards? Yeah, but only for arena. I don't think there's one for MTGO. There might be. I heard about it. I don't know if it's real. All right. Um, let's go Charming Prince to Scry, and then I want to get down this vial as soon as possible because it's one of the main parts of our plan. Bottom both of those because they're not land drops. I could have saved that Charming Prince to flicker the Militia Bugler, but value's not our aim in this game. Our aim in this game is to not die, hit the creatures, make sure they have no creatures. Everything costs something. You can expect money for nothing and chicks for free. Chicks? Yeah, with C-H-I-C-S. -C chicks. That sounds like a song by the, the Dire Straits or something. Blighted agent, okay. They have a blink moth we have to worry about, but we got the ghost quarter this time. I just gotta get this Aether Vial up quickly and live. I gotta not die to this. Oh, force of vigor, you loser. No, I needed that. Good thing I didn't throw out the, the evolutionary leap yet. Oh, there we go. There we go. That's what I wanted. Play that. Get rid of Blighted Agent. Let's attack. Uh, we gotta start pressuring their life total and race them. Because I'll happily block a Glistener Elf all day long with this Skyclave Apparition and just give them a 2-2 Vanilla Do-Nothing. And I gotta Ghost Quarter that Ink Moth as soon as possible. We get in with it. 
They probably have to leave it back. Oh, no, they're just going to scale up right away. All right. It's fine. Now their shield's down. They play their land drop. They got nothing untapped, and I'm going to be able to ghost quarter it. I am low on mana. But you got to do what you got to do. So ghost quarter that. Play Evolutionary Leap. And because they could have Dismember, maybe I should stay back. Hmm. Yeah, I should probably stay back. Just to be extra safe. Because if they don't draw a creature for a while, we can definitely beat a Glistener Elf. Skyclave is the best card in the Soul Color of White. Yeah, in recent memory, definitely. The best card, the best white card we've gotten in a while. Like, we were bugging Watsy, like, please give us good white cards. We have nothing good. And and then they gave us Skyclave, and th that was that. They drew a Blighted Agent. Lucky you. All right, well, I'm going to attack with both of these guys. Because now that I drew a voice, and if they dismember that, I still get that fat token anyways. And I can start leaping this voice. Nice mana screw in a 23 land deck with 8 mana dorks and 4 aether vials. <laughs> if I leap this voice, I hope I find a bird or something. Like, I really need some mana. Come on, opponent, just ended already. I know you're just going to pump this Blighted Asian and swing at us. And that'll be the end of that. Do they really not have any pump spells when they got three cards in hand and a canopy to crack? They got to have something. Yeah, I'm taking it. Nothing. Nothing at all. And another Blighted Agent. There we go. All right. So we drew our land. So go to combat. Mm. Going with these. No, it's just going with all. I think I want a bugler instead of a voice because it gives me the option between more and I could potentially find a Skyclave or a Banisher Priest and I really need to get rid of those things. You know what? I just need aggression on board. That's it. All I need is aggression on board. So I don't think Militia Bugler would contribute anything, so let's just leap the voice Get a fatty and try to find another thing to play. Tender shoot dryad. I mean, I got lethal on board, so there's that. If they don't have a pump spell, I can force them to keep one of their guys back and I can live another turn. And then I would live another turn. So please, opponent, just don't have a pump spell. Skyclave is the best card. Oh, wait, we already read that message. All are y'all excited for the new Commander Legends. I, I really, really, really want to be excited about the new Commander cards, but because I can't play, like, quarantine's a thing, so, like, it just sucks. I mean, the cards don't suck, but it just quarantine sucks. You ground slow? No, if they have ground slows, we cast them. I'm at seven infect. It looks like they got nothing. They have to leave one of their blighted agents back.
They're swinging in one of their guys, so they didn't draw a pump spell. Just one, see? Going to eight, in fact, and they're going to be forced to chomp, and then we're going to go to nine, in fact, and then we're going to win. If they don't draw a pump spell, like, they got to crack their canopy quick. They drew Glistener Elf as well, so they could have attacked with both, but they're fearing us to draw a removal. Okay, I feel like I'm kind of forced to sack the Charming Prince to Evolutionary Leap here. No, I don't know, like... Oh my goodness, this is so tough. So if I swing with Elemental and Charming Prince, they're forced to chump the Elemental. That's what they're going to do. All right, I only have one thing I can do. So let's go attacking. I would not mind them trading this thing off, so I will swing with that as well. So there's only one thing I can do here, and that is sack to Evolutionary Leap and find a Banisher Priest or a Skyclave Apparition. That's it. Or find a Charming Prince and flicker my Skyclave Apparition. All right, they're blocking like that. They're going to take three. Now let's leap our Charming Prince. Please. Please. No. I'm dead. I'm literally dead. All right. So it turns out the only way we lose to Infect is getting mana screwed. Because we, the only ever time, we've beaten Infect like 20 or 30 times in the channel's history. We've been streaming since January of 2018. So for like almost three years at this point. And we lost to Infect once due to mana screw. And this is the second time we lose to it. And we also got heck of mana screwed right there. And they did have a pump spell anyways, so yeah. They're just gonna flex on us and show us their hand to gloat. Yeah, there was lands. Like, we just were stuck on like two and then like three and then two for a long time. Hello everybody and welcome to the speed up session for today's video. As you know, we like to speed up the longest games in our video to make sure it's not way longer than it should be. And as I always say, if you want to catch the full games unsped up, unedited and uncut from the video, you can go to the Twitch link down below in the description and check out the entire VOD from last Monday. So for today, we are speeding up the next two rounds. This first game, as soon as I saw the Giver of Runes, I was like, oh no, this is going to be a very, very long grindy game because it's against taxes. And taxes is so interacty. So I know that, like, you know, they can get into that sword, but if they don't have a sword, it's just going to be a board stall for ages. Because not only was it slow enough because they got one giver of runes, but they got two. So now they can start giving each other, like, hex proof to, like, get in. Like, I was contemplating when I wanted to violin that conclave, uh, that skyclave, whatever it's called. I decided to eat the sword of fire and ice with it because that's what was killing me. Um, when in reality, I should have just eaten the, the Amiria that was on it. The, um, what do you call it? Archon of Amiria, Because it made it so I can only cast one spell per turn. You know, it's okay if they want to equip that sword to something else. But I just want, I needed to have the ability to cast multiple spells. Because that was really holding me back. But not only that, is I was just mana screwed too. Like, I couldn't get up to five for this um, tennis shoot drive the whole time. Like, this game goes to like turn 15, 20... I don't even remember how long this game was, but um, it goes to like turn 10, I think. But like this, this Tender Shoot Dryad was just stuck in our hand the whole time because not only could we only cast one spell per turn, but we just couldn't draw lands. Like we were having severe mana problems here. And you know, usually I don't like to include mana screw games in videos, but this game was long enough. I decided, sure. Um, so we are able to just get one spell in at a time and then another spell via Aether Vial. So with two spells at a time, we were able to outvalue them and get back there i feel like if i didn't take the sword of the, the skyclave apparition that it would have killed us so i guess in hindsight taking the sword was the best idea and so we did it going on to game number two they get to be on the play and they get a head start on aether vial 
Now, I guess since we're talking about Aether Vial, I will talk about something that I don't recall if I talked about in the outro, but Kenisha Dryad was just something I wanted to try today. It's not something that I usually run in this deck, because in paper, I would go a lot more three drop heavy, and I think that's what you want to do with this deck, because you really want to just... This deck is pretty much based off of getting Aether Vial to three, and then getting um, Voice Resurgence to just constantly sack it by a back, sack it by a back. So in real life, I would just use like... Um, Renegade Rallier to be able to revolt, you know, sack something to um, Evolutionary Leap to trigger revolt. Find a Renegade Rallier, play it, get back the voice, sack the voice, get a fat token and something else, and just continue to chain the voice resurgence. That's what the deck is like based off of. It doesn't really seem like it by the way I played the deck today, but if you're going to mess around with this deck and try to play it seriously, that's just something that I would try to focus on is constantly using voice resurgence. There's a lot of ways to find it you know, Leap and Militia Bugler or Bugler or whatever you want to call it and all this kind of stuff. Uh, so game number two, they take it down. We're going on to game number three now, and this is just yet another grindy one. They got the Sword of Fire nice, but I'm doing my best to try to prevent it. I really need to find an answer to that. So what I'm doing is I'm just chump blocking with birds to like stall out those, those sword swings and trying to just beat in there with my small little guys. Like, they got that token that they got off of my Skyclave Apparition, but we're getting really close because they're at 8, and they're also running out of time on their clock as well. They get down double Phyrexian Revoker, naming both my Aether Vial and my Evolutionary Leaps. That really sucks. But I'm able to um, flicker my Skyclave Apparition with the Charming Prince, and I get rid of one of their um, Skyclave Apparitions. I get rid of the one that's naming Evolutionary Leap because I really want to use that for value and finding more threats, finding more Skyclave apparitions and whatnot, and I do, and I'm able to get rid of the sword, and now they really don't have anything spectacular, and they would have to trade off their whole board to be able to deal with it I'm going to swing with, and they end up skipping it up. So that was a very, very, very long game. It was like 45 minutes, but we came out victorious against Taxes, one of the grindiest decks in the format right now. And we are moving on to the last game in the video, and this one is against uh, the grinding station combo knew what it was immediately after seeing like dance of the Mance and emery and like just guy colors uh, like at first i was thinking it was just guy sentency combo and granny station of course sealed the deal like i i covered this deck in a deck tech a while back um it was when underworld breach got ba uh, not banned when it got printed and i was like the video was like this is the new best combo in modern and at the time it was it, it was crazy it was insane because it's a two card combo it's just, um, the combo is Emery plus uh, any zero drop artifact, doesn't matter. They have Engineered Explosives, they had main deck Tormod's Crypt because Graveyards are such a thing. Mishra's Bobble, Mox Amber, lots of zero drops, so it doesn't matter which one. So just Emery and then Underworld Breach so that you can use the under the grinding station to uh, um, sacrifice your artifact. Oh yeah, I was Grinding Station combo, Grinding Station and then Underworld Breach. You can just basically use Grinding Station to mill out your entire deck keep using the zero drop artifact to um escape and just keep coming back to life sacking it and milling your entire library and winning the uh i forget exactly what it was thassa's oracle or something like that and this was kind of a boring matchup because that's exactly what they were doing we weren't doing much just sitting there watching them combo off through our meddling mage somehow because they bounce it with teferi and i can't recast it um so it's inevitable they got the combo pieces assembled and they're able to combo off so we came a little bit close we didn't have enough combo hate and we got very flooded on evolutionary leaps in our hand we drew all three and with that let's go on to the wrap up so we ended up with three total wins the deck was pretty average it did pretty well and uh our, our loss was to mana screw so that's something that just shouldn't happen that's just pure luck of the draw so i really think this deck is still really good I think it was like able to grind out against anything control based like as you saw against Mardu this thing was absolutely grinding out against control like so hardcore they could not deal with our threats because we would leap them in response and turn them into more threats and then we would eat back threats and it would just be a nightmare for control to deal with and a nightmare for mid range versus mid range to deal with because we would end up winning via getting our voices back over and over and sagging them again and for even more value and then bugler to find skyclaves and just win the board stall so it's just so powerful once it gets the leap and vial going if you don't get leap then it's just a regular mid-range deck but you're still a pretty solid mid-range deck you just eventually find your gavony township and win that way if you don't win via leap 
Um, and then there's the question of what if you get leap but you don't have vile? Well, you're gonna need to have drawn a bunch of mana dorks. Because leap only finds creatures, it doesn't find you lands, obviously. So if you have a land problem going on and you're you're a little bit mana screwed, it's gonna be more difficult to use leap. And if you don't have sackables, that's a problem. So when I played the leap deck in paper, I had I think Strangler or Geist, I had Kitchen Thinks. I think um Strangler Root Geist is another thing that um, Bugler can find that, that is sackable. So if you're going to try a version without Charming Prince I, and like Ewit and Knight of the Royal Quarry and stuff, I would recommend trying out Strangler Root Geist. And like I said, there's a lot of different shells you can do with with uh, the package of Mana Dorks, Vile, Leap, and Militia Bugler. Like, you can go with the, the Leon and Arbiter Archon of Emeria variant, just like that Taxes deck we went up against. You can do that kind of thing and just deny mana while also being a value town deck because you could also be annoying with Voice Resurgence sacking because that's a good thing that Hate Bears does as well. Tender Shoot Dryad, I really wanted to have fun with, but we never really got to get it down and get it going because we were getting mana screwed a lot today. Um, we couldn't get up to 5 mana, and it's weird because usually a deck that has 23 lands and 8 mana dorks tends to get to 5 mana, but that wasn't the case. And I can't believe we, out of all of the rounds, we only drew Gavity once and never got to use it. Like, it's usually a card that whenever we're playing it, it usually wins us a game or two because it's so powerful. And that thing alongside the Tender Street Dryad is just massively face-punching. So I believe that Tender Shoot Dryad can be good, but maybe you want to try some other things. If you don't like it, you can definitely change it out. I I like didn't have that when I originally played this deck in paper because it wasn't a three drop. And the point of the deck was to put the Aether Vial up to three. And there was a lot of times where we had the Aether Vial on three, but it had nothing to vial in. So I would recommend going very three drop heavy this deck and that's something that i always tell people not to do is to work on your curve make sure you have a lot of cheap early game stuff and don't have as many three drops but in this specific instance because the deck is based around violing like in three drops i'd recommend doing that like i'd recommend going three drop heavy maybe like tenor shoot sure you can try it if you like the idea i think it's really cool and i didn't really get to try it out but yeah, three drop heavy is probably the way to go. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, hit that like button down below and subscribe if you're new for the Spice Used to Gameplay every other day. We upload our MTG gameplay every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And uh, so yeah, make sure you hit that notification bell so you don't miss out. And if you want to check out the Twitter, the link is down below, as well as a link to Twitch if you want to catch one of these live streams. We stream our Magic the Gathering gameplay all day long on Mondays. We stream variety through the rest of the week, Tuesday through Friday. So come out if you want to see some other games. And if you want to try today's deck out for yourself, consider signing up with Mana Traders in the link down below using the code Marin Moon to save 15% off and you can rent today's deck and play along with us. And if you want to try today's deck out of paper or pick up any magic cards really, consider picking them up through our deck list link down below. That's our tcgplayer.com link. Anything you purchase there really helps out the channel. And uh, that's about it, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I will catch you in the next one. Peace out. Thank you so much to our supporters over on Patreon for making this channel possible. Patreon is a platform where you can financially support the content creators you love. And if you would like to go the extra mile and help monetize these MTG video creations so I can keep doing this kind of content, the Patreon link is down below in the description. But if you would like to support the channel for free, hitting that like and subscribe button down below is well enough for me. And a quick special thanks to our top tier supporter this month, The Real Shroom. And that's about it, guys. Thank you so much for watching the video, and I'll catch you in the next one.